Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Well, today we're going to pick up where we left off last week, where we installed a decoder in this Atlas RS3 locomotive. And what we're going to do today is add a headlight using this tiny surface mount LED. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Now, in a previous video, I showed you a lot about different kinds of LEDs that you can use for headlights in your locomotives. And I'll put a link to that video above me right here so that you can go back and, and take a look at that. But in this one, we're just going to take a look at installing these tiny surface mount device uh, LEDs. Now, these are very, very small, and I'll show you in a minute just how small they are as soon as I can zoom in down here on the bench top. But I have found these to be great. You can get these off of eBay. Uh, they're listed as golden white surface mount LEDs. And uh, you can get these in various sizes. This particular one is an 0805. And that means it's 0.08 inches on one side and 0.05 inches on the other. And for those of you in the metric uh, countries, uh, 0.08 inches comes out to about two millimeters. So these are about two millimeters by a little over one millimeter uh, in size. So they're very, very small, but they put out a very large amount of light for that size. So they are great for lighting in locomotives, and they're going to last a lot longer. Now, one thing I do want to mention before we go on is the different types of decoders that I pointed out that are made by all kinds of companies that fit this particular size format of locomotive. And these are used and have been used in Athern, Atlas, Cato, Lifelike, and a wide variety of other uh, locomotives. One thing to be aware of, a lot of these were designed and are designed to be used with 12 to 14 to 16 volt uh, light bulbs. However, when you start using an LED, these things, um, you know, they need about 3 volts, not 12 volts. So you have to have a dropping resistor on them. And this one comes with a dropping resistor, uh, and I'll show you this close up in a minute. But some boards now, circuit boards, actually come with resistors built into them uh, for LEDs. Typically, if, if they've got resistors built in or if they've got a voltage regulator circuit built in, that's going to be the top of the line decoders. They're going to be more expensive. The less expensive ones that are just straight DC decoders are in the $30 price range are probably going to still be putting out about one volt less than what's on the track. So be aware of that when you start installing LEDs in locomotives. Okay, I've got everything set up here on the workbench to get started, but first I wanted to show you how small these little surface mount LEDs are. So you can see it right here at the end of my thumb. They are extremely tiny. So again, that's about two millimeters on one side by a little over a millimeter on the other side. So they're very, very small, but as you'll see, they do put out quite a bit of light. Now, one of the first things you need to do is determine where you're going to connect your light bulbs to. Now, on this type of circuit board, typically the two contacts here between the pickup contacts are set up for your, the forward and the reverse headlights. On this particular one, you can see it's got a C right here on the board and a C back here. That indicates that these are the common connections, and that means positive, because on a DCC decoder, the common wire is blue, and that is positive, and on the circuit boards, the Traces are maybe labeled positive, they, be, they may be labeled common, they may just be labeled with a C. But that's how you can tell them apart. Uh, typically they are marked, but also the literature that comes with the decoder will have that type of information as well. So pay attention to that. Now, at that point, once you have this figured out, I will tell you that this particular pre-wired LED that I showed you a minute ago, the resistor that comes with it is on the positive leg. So all we have to do is solder this wire here coming from that resistor to that common connection, 
okay? And the other wire goes to this one here, the negative connection. Now, one thing that someone asked me the, in the comments about this was, why did I put this in with the components facing down? The simple answer for that is that's what they tell you to do in the instructions. But part of that reason is that the silk screening for rear and forward and the light common versus the negative and various other information is on this side. So it makes it easier to figure it out. Also, the solder contacts for these brass or bronze strips from your motor are on this side of the board. So you're going to have a difficult time soldering to the underside otherwise. Now it's not as big a matter if you're going to use hard wiring with these contacts. Now as I've explained in a number of other videos, I prefer to solder directly to the circuit board as opposed to using those little black plastic uh, clips. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pre-tin these contacts here on the, uh, on the circuit board so we can get started. And I'm going to do the same thing with my wires on these. Now you can, you can shorten these wires and move your resistor around uh, if you want, or you can go ahead and use the full length. I, I prefer to go ahead and use the full length because I can, you know, fold these up and tuck them inside of the uh, shell without any problems. They'll sit up on top of the board. You don't have to worry about shorts. And it just makes it a lot easier when you're dealing with bulbs that are connected to headlights in the shell and yet attached to the circuit board on the chassis. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pre-tin these as well. There. And we'll get this little guy here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and put it back here. Now remember the resistor, which is right here in this thick end here. It's covered by heat shrink tubing. I'm going to solder this in backwards. There, okay. And we'll use this little guy here on this side. Okay, there, that one's done. And I'm just going to bring it forward out of the way. So that's going to be well long enough to reach all the way to the front of this locomotive. So now I'm going to go ahead and we'll solder, pre-tin the leads on this other piece here. And shorten that little tag there a bit. And we're ready to make that connection. And we have this one ready to go in now. Now, if you want to confirm for yourself which one of these uh, contacts is positive and negative, just get yourself a little 9 volt battery. And I'm going to make the contacts here to the plus and minus as I said they were. Remember, red is positive. So you can see that LED is lighting up. And you can see how bright that sucker is. Okay, so that way you can tell real quickly whether or not you really have the positive and the negative ends or contacts on these LEDs sorted out. Now, as soon as you've got all your contacts made, I recommend taking this over, putting it on the track, and giving it a test drive to make sure that the headlights do work. There's no need in going any further unless you've confirmed that everything you've done works as you move along. So, I'm going to go test it, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I fired it up. Both headlights work, and no problem at all. Now, this particular uh, decoder board here has directional headlights. So, whenever you change direction, one or the other comes on. So, make sure you check that on your decoder uh, if one of them doesn't seem to work. Now, as you can see here, we've got a couple of chunky weights here, and those just kind of pop right out and get out of the way. You can see though we've got nice channels in them for the lights. That's made for the light tubes to fit through, but we'll be able to run our wiring down through that. Okay. Now, down inside here you can see these clear styrene light tubes. So those just pop out. They're held in place 
just by a little friction fit. So we can take those out of there and get that out of the way. Set that aside. So now I've got these two nice clear plastic light tubes. What I'm going to do is shorten these significantly so that I can attach the LED to these. So let me show you how I do that. It's really pretty crude. You can just take it and cut it like that. And it'll give you a nice square edge here to work with. So I'm going to do that even further because I want it even further back up out of the way. There we go. And we'll take this one here and do the same thing. Okay, so the rest of this is for the scrap box. Never throw anything away. Ask my wife. She'll tell you. I don't. Okay, so at this point, how are we going to attach these to this? Well, on some occasions, I used to uh, actually super glue the LED to the end of this light tube. More recently, I've taken to using a slightly different approach. So let me show you that. Now what I'm going to do is I've got this little piece of clear styrene. Don't know how well you can see that. And in my drill, I've got this 1 16th inch diameter bit. So I'm just going to grip this in my fingers of steel here and make a human vise and drill a hole. See if I can get this where you can see it better. Now you want to make something deep enough that your LED is going to slide down into it. So we'll stop and do a test fit real quick here. Uh, that barely goes in there. So I'm going to get a, a different drill. Okay, I think this one's going to give me a little bit better speed and penetration. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay, now as you can see, this LED is going to fit in there fully. And when that lights up, it's going to fill that entire light tube with light. Now, how am I going to make that stay in there? Well, before we go on, I want to ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's simple, easy, and free. All you have to do is hit that little red uh, subscribe button. And when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. I have a product here that I've shown you in the past. It's called Uhu Tech Pro Power. And what this is, it's an adhesive black putty. It's actually dark gray, but we we'll call it black. At any rate, you can get this in blue, you can get it in black. I find that it's better to use the black because when the, when the lights are not lit, you can see a little bit of blue tint coming through some of these uh, light tubes. So I'm going to take a little bit of this adhesive and it pulls it off just like a piece of taffy. And I'm going to put my LED back in the hole, just like this. And then I'm going to take this black tack and I'm going to put it over the hole. And squeeze it down in there so that it's all around the opening and around the LED itself, pushing it f as far in as I can get. And that's going to do two things. It's going to hold it in place, and it's also going to prevent a lot of light com from coming out the back of the tube. Okay, so that's fully in there. Okay, I've got this other one drilled out now, and we can insert the uh, LED in it, as I did before. And I'm going to take my little piece of black tack and fit it in there. Just like sticking a wad of chewing gum to the bottom of your desk at school. Okay, I've got everything set up. I uh, got my uh, Digitrex Zephyr out. And let's power it up and see what happens. Okay, we've got one headlight on. You can see right here how much light that's producing. And you really don't get very much leakage out the back of it because of the black tack. Now if I reverse the direction of travel, you can see that the other light comes on. Same thing. So we're getting a lot of light out the ends here. Now one thing I also want to point out with this is when we install these weights here, you can see that we've got this metal arm here that can come back 
and end up touching and bridging the two contacts here. And that could short everything out. So we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to show you how I avoid that. So what I'm going to do is I've got some of my Kapton tape. And this is a really, really high quality insulating tape. It's used uh, in the space industry, avionics, the whole nine yards. So I'm going to cut a piece of that off. I'm going to apply it to the end of this metal weight here and bring it around so that we're good and uh, protected. And that way it's not going to rub against the contacts. I'm going to trim off the rest of this. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and just trim off the excess that we have left over here. If I can get it to start down in there. There we go. So we can just trim that away. And on both sides now. There we go. So that will protect the ends. Now, you know, you might get away with using electrical tape. Typically, electrical tape will fail after a certain amount of time. And then you're going to be left with those exposed contacts. So I don't recommend using uh, electrical tape. I prefer using this Kapton tape. This stuff will last for ages, it seems like. Let me get the other one done. So you can see, that's how this fits together right here. And we want to get these lights so that they're short enough so everything's going to fit in here. So the next thing we're going to do is install these light tubes back in the locomotive itself. Now for gluing these um, clear styrene parts in place, I'm going to use Tester's Clear Parts Cement and Window Maker. I think this is just some sort of an acrylic uh, material that will dry clear, so it's not going to interfere with our lights if it gets down in there, but it's going to hold everything firmly in place. And presumably, um, I don't know if it can be dissolved in water, but it'll be easier to take it out afterwards, I think, if you ever need to remove these lights uh, to repaint the locomotive, anything like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is put just a drop or two of this cement right here in the end of the locomotive where those light tubes are going to be installed. Okay, I'm going to try this using one of my hemostats. I think it'll be easier to grip it and insert it back into the opening here. There we go. Went right in. And I'm going to hold that in place for a second while it dries. Let me get the cement that oozed out off of the front of the model before it dries there. The good thing about this stuff is it's water cleanup. So if you do need to uh, clean up any that oozes out the front, you can get that before it dries. Okay, I'm just going to hold this in place while it uh, sets up a little bit. So I'll be back when this one is dried and we'll do the other one. Okay, what I'm going to do to help hold this in place while that glue dries, I'm going to take a little piece of my Kapton tape and I'm going to stick those wires in place. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. Okay, so I'm going to take it and stick those in place like that. And that's going to hold that uh, casting where I want it to be. So right here is the installed light tube with that clear part cement. And then here I've got the wires for it coming back underneath of this piece of uh, Kapton tape. And that's going to hold it firmly in place while everything dries. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to do the other one and let that dry and show you what it looks like after I'm done. Okay, so I've got everything tucked away inside the shell. 
the clear part cement has dried and it is clear as a bell. So I'm going to go ahead and insert these weights into place here over the light casting, what's left of it, and the wiring. So that's going to hold everything in place. There, got that tucked in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and push all of these wires down inside of the shell. I'm going to turn this so you can see it a little better. Now one of the great things about this circuit board for this installation is it covers the full length of the motor and the flywheels. So that's going to prevent these wires from working their way down in there and getting caught in the flywheel itself. Now another thing I want to remind you, make sure you put the walkway back on the locomotive before you install the wires. If you don't do that, it can be very, very difficult to get this to spread out enough to fit over the shell. You have to take the cab off. It was a mess. I didn't want to do that again. So remind, always remember to do that. Okay, got it tucked in there now. Let me make sure no wires are sticking down. Nope, everything's tucked away, so good. I'm gonna pop this back into place, get these connectors or these little clips to go down in there and make contact. Okay, shell's all back together. Okay, so everything's in there. You can see we've got the headlights are back in place on both ends here. And so now let's go ahead and I'm going to put a piece of track back here and we'll get it set up and give it a test. Okay, I've got the shell back on, everything's tucked away, we've got no rubbing going on or anything. Um, so let's go ahead and turn on the light and see how it works. Okay, so you can see we've got a nice bright headlight here. Let's go forward and see that the locomotive runs. No problem. Now watch the headlight when I reverse. You can see that the light goes out and I'll confirm it is on at the other end. I hope you'll trust me on that. So, very quick response. A lot of decoders are available with this auto reversing feature. Um, a lot of other decoders are available so you can set them up to control the headlights independently. Now one thing, when you put your locomotive on the track, if the locomotive runs in one direction and the lights come on in the opposite direction, that could be due to a couple of reasons. First of all, it could be because the motor connections are reversed. Uh, that's not likely to happen with one of these that's installed properly with the motor brush contacts wired directly to the board. However, if you use the other two contacts on the side and hardwire it, then it is possible to reverse them. And that way you can end up with your headlights out of phase with your direction of travel. The second way that this can obviously happen is if you put the wrong set of lights or the wrong LED uh, set up in the wrong end of the shell. And that's very easy to do if you've got a lot of wire here and trying to keep track of it, but you have to think this out up front. Um, some people think that you can actually just fix that by quickly setting CV29 so that the normal direction of travel is reversed or normal. Um, that doesn't work because all it does is change the direction the locomotive will normally go in, the headlights will still be out of phase. So you need to go in and either check the motor contacts and make sure those are set up properly, or check your headlights and make sure that you put the right bulb into, or the right LED, into the right end of the locomotive. And obviously the easiest way to fix that anyway is to just reverse them. And on the Southern Railway, the long hood end of these Alco locomotives was considered forward. So I've got my forward direction going right, and I have my headlights working right. So, that's it. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope that uh, this will get you started on adding lights, or LED lights, to your locomotives. It's a fairly easy process to do, particularly with these that I get from eBay that come in. I think I paid about, oh, 50 cents each for these. So they're not all that expensive. So look on eBay for gold and white surface mount LEDs 
They usually sell these in groups of 20 for about 10 bucks each. So you can pick them up, like I say, for about 50 cents each off of eBay. When I first started buying, buying these, they came directly from uh, China. However, now most of these guys have warehouse arrangements here in the U.S. and your products are shipped directly to you from uh, a warehouse in either New Jersey or New York or California. So that's it for today. Next week, we're going to be taking a look at the Helix that I did a series of videos on a couple of months ago. And I'm going to show you how you can use block detection in your Helix or any other area on your layout to show the position of your locomotives and your trains at any point in time. And then later on after that, we'll get into using block detection for signaling. So come on back for that video next week. Here from the DCC guy. Bye now.